Hey guys, Zenobu here to do an update for Bo Peep, not the lamb version because I am surprisingly bad with electronics. It's gonna take a while. But what I can do is to fix the sheep and make some changes to Bo Peep. As you can see, I couldn't really match the skin tone last time. So I want to repaint her head and her arms. Her hairband is also wrong, the ribbon is too small and her waistband is of the wrong pattern. I also want to redo her purple tape and bandages and put rail strings around the cane. We shall start with making her a kitchen towel gown to prevent paint from ruining her outfit. And now she's a mummy. Next, I will be doing facial treatment with our special blue tag mask guaranteed to make your face look younger. It's just easier to shape the blue tag around the round edges compared to using tape. Oh look, Ultraman. Just gonna go over the parts with a brighter beige and compare the colors with an amputated piece of her arm. If you haven't seen how I cut her arms off in part 1, make sure to catch yourself up. And we can just remove the blue tag, the tapes, clean things up and reuse it for future projects. Much better. Of course, every customizing comes with complimentary sanding. But let's try to limit some of that fun by snipping some ropes off first. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Time to bring out the big guns and breathe in some dust. Wow, this middle section is so goddamn thick. My hands are literally shaking. Not from breathing in the dust. I wore a mask, obviously. It's from holding onto my stick too firmly. Let's get the white stuff off and continue with the set. And it's time to string this cane. I doubt there's a specific way to string it so I'm not too concerned about the accuracy. I am still referring to the movie and following as closely as possible. Okay, the cane has taken so much more energy with the sanding, I need a break from Bo Peep to take a look at our sheep. The original plan was just to repaint them but for toy mode, their eyelids are slanted outwards giving them an innocent look. As usual, anti-toy mode think way decided to make them frown and give them really thick ears. So repainting is out, we have to behead them one by one and give it a quick scan with our POP2 scanner. Just a few rotations on the turntable and you get the exact size of the head and the neck connector so that you don't have to worry about any misfitting. I think expressive bow peep deserves expressive shape. So today we get to let our imaginations run wild. But first, we gotta get her basic shapes right by separating the shapes into different parts like her ears and her eyeballs. I dug her ears to mimic the drooping cloth and separated the ball of wool above her ears as well and we can finally have some fun. The sheep in Toy Story 4 have so much personality and their reaction to Woody forgetting their names is just so classic. I had to replicate it. But it will be boring if they all have the same look. So for the other two, I chose the much simpler expressions of contempt. One giving the side eye and the other rolling her eyes with complete disgust for Woody. I masked and pushed her mouth open, duplicated her eyeballs, dragged it into the newly formed mouth and transformed it into her teeth. Really magical stuff. The top teeth is just another duplicate but bigger. Oh and her tongue is also a duplicate but merged together into one big pile of muscle placed in the middle. And just when you thought it's over, it's not. Her eyelids are also duplicates cut into pieces and rounded to fit the eyeballs. That is how convenient digital sculpting is. For the second head, it's just the first head with her mouth slightly opened. Same for the third. Now the curls on the hair. I took an actual curl from the movie, cut it out, darkened it, softened the edges, make it white, and applied it as an alpha on ZBrush. As closely as possible. There is another variation of the curl without the inner curl, so I made it and applied accordingly. Fun fact, all three shapes actually have different placements of curls, and we already know which route Thinkway took, they made them all the same. 
but we are not Think Way, we are ZW, and I will try my best to get them right. One thing to note is that there's just not enough references for the back, so I just took some artistic liberty to fill in the gaps. Thanks to the 3D scan model of the body, I could see how the heads would look when inserted into their respective holes, and it seems like they are just angry at the ground for no reason. So I masked the neck off and rotated their heads to help them redirect their anger towards the right direction. And we are ready to print. While printing three heads is gonna take a whole day, ugh. Let's make some modifications to Bo Peep's outfit. I bought a lot of materials for this video because we want her outfit to be as accurate as possible. And they are sponsored by our coffee crew. Thank you Joe Master for upgrading to our resin tier and small for the seat tier, very generous in it, and our one-off from CJ. You guys are the reason why I don't have to compromise on quality, so thank you so much. Please don't worry if you are not able to join the coffee crew because you are already watching this video and it's good enough. I appreciate it. The issue I have with the ribbon is the color, size, and thickness. It should have been thicker along the edge, so it makes sense to get a wider ribbon and fold them into the center. For the band, we want the lines to be horizontal, so I'm gonna cut it, fold it, and glue it around our ribbon. And it's done! Next would be the waistband, which is straight and not wavy like the Disney stores. I couldn't find one with the white stitchings along the edges, but I figured I could just sew them in one by one. According to my initial calculations, it's gonna take forever to complete. Screw it, it's not worth it. Now, the Disney Store's cape is not really well done. I don't even think I will be using it, but I do want to fix it. It can only attach one way and the jam is gone when you flip it over. With our new discovery of magnets, I decided to cut the fastener off, remove the jam and insert the magnet. I simply cut the fabric and slot them in because I'm not ready to touch a sewing needle anytime soon. For the flower jam, I glued a screw head because of polarity issues. If my physics is right, a magnet would probably stick on one side but repel the other when the cape is flipped over. So here I just need a magnetic material to stick on both sides. Yeah, it's okay, the comment section will correct me. Obviously, I still need to make the stickers for Toy Story 4 Ship. I found a taco image from a mark that you can actually buy, but because it's on a curved surface, I had to readjust the image and make it straight. After cleaning the image up, I added a tear effect on the edges and printed the image out with some stars, a flower and a sun. Let me know on my coffee page if you will like this image. Now it's time to make some stickers. It's so funny that Pixar probably just stuck some random stickers on the ship, but it took so long to find the right materials to recreate them in real life. I bought some foam stickers, stuck on the flower pattern and cut it out. If I'm not wrong, this is a 8mm white rhinestone sticker and that's one down. Similarly for the sun, I stuck it on a yellow foam and cut it out. I wanted to cut some orange foam but my lazy eyes just decided to paste an orange sticker in the middle and call it done. There are actually three stars of different sizes. My tape is of the wrong size so I have to cut some extra bits to cover the entire star but I think you won't be able to tell at all. For the blue glittery star, the size is just right so no extra cutting required. Ah. It's done, so satisfying to see them all complete. Well, the prints are ready and they look amazing, but I don't feel like sanding yet, so here's a ship body without it. To make the curls darker, I used some oil pastels to darken them and wipe the excess off. This would have worked great throughout, but Thinkway, again, decided to scheme on quality and their curls were not evenly carved in. So you can see that the colors were not able to stay in the curves for some areas and they look really uneven compared to the rest. It's fine, I will fix it with a brush later. After suffering off camera, the ship are ready for paint. I used an off-white paint for the wool and reused our blue tag to mask them off. Pale beige for the skin, some pink for the ears, nose and mouth, white for the eyes and teeth, 
black for the iris and this is me trying not to fall asleep. But we are nearly done. Just revive the ship with their three heads and gloss them like your life depends on it because it has to be really shiny. Don't forget about Bo and her arms and then it's sticker time. Man, I feel like a kid again playing with stickers but with a lot of strict parents looking because I can't really place them any old how. Again, the curves on the body are not 100% accurate either, so I had to guesstimate the positions, but all in all, they are near where they should be. To finish off, we got a bandage bow peep up, decorate her arm, and for her head, I bought a pink cord, glue it on, and end off with the ribbon. Finally, bow peep and her ship has a new look. One smirking and the other frustrated. I had a lot of fun making three different shapes instead of three of the same face. That's gonna hurt my brain when I make toy mode. The stickers are pretty good. I do like how they turned out. And I'm glad that Bo Peep has a brighter skin tone now. Although it's still not a complete match. All her other accessories are pretty much accurate. I am choosing to ignore the white stitching. If you found one, please let me know. Consider supporting the channel with coffee. Stay tuned and I will see you next time.